do a little bit better than that. Good morning, Black Chapel. Amen, amen. This is indeed another day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. David declared, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Okay, let me say that again. David declared, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Okay, I heard about three more, four, more, four people now. Let, let me say it one more time. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 All right. All right. I know it's cold outside, so, so but let's wake up this morning. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Man, uh, okay, our Young Duck Choir already in place, so let us please stand and proceed on with our responsive reading. Coming from 1 Timothy, the 4th, chapter 12 through the 15th verse. And it reads as follows. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders lay their hands on you. Altogether, be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. You may be seated, and we turn you over to our pastor for our, bapt for our baptism service. Good morning, Blacks Chapel, Good morning. and our visiting friends. This is another day that our God has made, and we come out here this morning to rejoice and to be glad in it. We thank God once again for blessing us with another baptism ceremony, evidence that God is still in the saving business, and that God's will has not changed towards such, and that is that all shall be saved and none perish. We thank God for our candidates this morning. We thank God for those in whom they encamped around them to assist him in leading and guiding them to come to know the Lord in the pardon of their sin. We thank God for the Black Chapel Missionary Baptist Church family to be here at their side as witnesses to this great ceremony. We pray that if any may enter into this sanctuary during the activities of our worship service this morning, who may not know the Lord in the pardon of their sins, that God will bless one of us with a word, an act, or deed to speak are to commit in the presence of such that will assist him in leading them also and to come and to know the Lord and the pardon of their sin. Let us pray. Once again, our most gracious and eternal Father, we come with bowed heads and humbled hearts, thanking you for the giving of another wonderful, beautiful day. Thank you, Lord God, for this blessed occasion. Thank you, Lord God, for those who chose life over death, eternal. Thank you for their guardians, those who saw fit to praise placed them in the atmosphere where the presence of God was present for the purpose of salvation. Thank you, Lord God, for all that's been said and all that's been done thus far in this worship service. Pray that as we continue our way through it, that all of our sins and all of our doings will be pleasing unto you. In the mighty precious name of Jesus, we do indeed pray and give thanks. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen.
unto God, who is the great head of the church. And upon little Cotton's faith in him, we come now baptizing her in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. In that obedience unto God, who is the great head of the church. We come at this time baptizing Sister Phillips in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Render obedience unto God, who is the great head of the church. We come at this time baptizing Brother Jordan in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. God, who is the great head of the church, and upon Sister Ramsey's faith in him, we now come baptizing her in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
Blessed be unto the Lord. Once again, we come thanking God this morning for the giving of this day and our daily bread and all the blessings that he has blessed us with thus far in the early part of this day. Thank God for our candidates, those who accepted life over death. Pray that we, as witnesses and stewards over eternal life, will be a witness and be a testimony <clears throat> to these young as they continue their journey through life in Christ as though we have done thus far. Let us continue to pray for those who are still out there in the world who has not come into the realization that there is, there is a blessing in serving a true and living God. Let us pray. Once again, our most gracious and eternal Father, we say thank you. Thank you for all that you've allowed to be said and done thus far in this worship service. Thanking you in advance for all the blessings that awaits us as we journey through this worship service this morning knowing that whatever the will of God toward us may be, we're going to become receptants of it, knowing that the will of God toward us is that we be of good health, sound mind, and prosperous. And we claim it all right now in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we do indeed pray and give thanks. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Let's give a hand clap of praise for our candidates once again. Amen. 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 Let's proceed on with our worship service. Let us please stand with our congregational hymn, Blessed Assurance. Oh! 
Sound the most amazing. Good morning, Black's Chapel. What a blessing it is to see a new day. You know, every, every day as it brings us new blessings, new mercies, and new graces. And here, here we are, the first fourth Sunday of the year 2024. The Lord has brought us through another year. And it's only because of your, his grace and mercy that we are here today. It is now time for our morning devotion. We ask that you join in with us as we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We come to you in a spirit of thanksgiving. Thanking you, first of all, Heavenly Father, for who you are. Heavenly Father, you are Alpha and Omega, first and the last, the beginning and the end. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for touching our bodies early this morning and waking us up and giving us a mind to come out and serve thee this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the food on the table, clothes on our backs, Heavenly Father, the roof over our head. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for our lying down last night and rising up this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died at the cross for our sins. Heavenly Father, because he shed his blood, we have been redeemed. We have been forgiven for every single solitary sin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blood that was shed and the body that was bruised for the remission of our sins. Heavenly Father, before we were even born, before we even conceived in our mother's womb, our sins had already been forgiven. For that, we just say thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank and praise you for every congregation, every church door that's open wide in your name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every individual and every household represented here this morning. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us another opportunity to, to bless and to praise your holy name. Father, we know it's only because of your love that we are so richly blessed. Father, we pray now that you will continue to bless and watch over and keep us, Heavenly Father. Father, we pray, pray Father, for our, our military personnel, our law enforcement, first responders, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we pray for our political leaders. We look around the world today, Heavenly Father, we see there is so much danger. We look around our city, we see so much toil, so much crime, and, and, and the Father, just things that are going on, Heavenly Father, that are, are not our deep. But we know, Heavenly Father, that you are in control and you are in charge. We're just going to continue to bless you and, and turn it all over to thee. Father, we pray for those that are bereaved this morning. Heavenly Father, those that have lost loved ones, the loved ones that have fallen to the call of them. Let them know that all they need to do is turn to you for their help, Heavenly Father. We know that all the help, that all blessings come from thee, Heavenly Father. Father, we, we know that, that, that if they would just turn to you and, to, and leave it in your hands. And, and, the, and the word tells us that weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning, Heavenly Father. Father, again, we just thank and praise you for every single word blessing. We pray, Father, for those that are in the nursing homes, come to nursing homes. The sick and shut in, Heavenly Father, those that are, that are on their sick bed, we pray that you heal them and continue to bless them in a special way. Father, we pray that you be with the man that's going to stand in John's shoes this morning and declare that word, Heavenly Father. We pray that this word will not go out and return void. And every year will be a listening ear, Heavenly Father, and we may receive and absorb the word, Heavenly Father, and apply it to our everyday life. Father, we pray that, that your light will shine through us so others may see your good works through us and the work that we do. Father, we pray that you forgive us for our sins, take every single sin and cast it into a sea of forgiveness, and we may sin no more and become the children that you would have us to be. Father, we pray to instill in us a, a spirit of obedience, Heavenly Father. Heavenly the Father, now as we proceed through the worship services this morning, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would just bless every individual and, and every auxiliary associated with the service this morning, Heavenly Father. And may, as we go forward with the program, the service, and, and give praises to thee, it be done in the spirit and in the manner that is pleasing in your sight. These are another blessing we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This now concludes our morning devotion. We ask that you continue to keep each other lifted up in prayers.
Amen. Amen. Okay. Great. How many of you know that God is great? I'm not just I'm not just talking about just to be saying it, just to be saying it. I'm not talking about I'm asking, do you know yes, from personal experience yes, that can testify that God is great? Amen, amen. Amen. Before we proceed on, I want y'all, I want to turn y'all turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad to see you today. That's right, loosen up, y'all. Amen. 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 First of all, we want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On the behalf of Black, uh, on the behalf of our pastor and first lady, we want to welcome you to our Sunday morning worship service. And those who are visiting us for the first time, or those who may be watching us via the live stream, um, those who may be visiting us for the first time, it may not be your first time, but we still want to greet you and acknowledge you in the name of our Lord. If you are visiting with us for the first time in our sanctuary, please stand. Amen. Amen. My name is Antoinette Lewis, and I'm from Greater New Day Missionary Baptist Church, and my pastor is Cedric Minor. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to have you. Amen. My name is Dexter Howard Jr. I am a member of the Wilder Chapel United Methodist Church, and the Reverend Terry Williams is my pastor. Amen. 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 We got to make some firepower in the choir today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Come on, Black Chapel, let's make a full walk. I love you. Black child, but we pray that something is said, something, something, most of all, something that will be preached will be a strength and addition to your walk with Jesus Christ this week. May God bless you. May God keep you. And we turn you over to our announcer, Sister Love. Good morning again, Black Chapel. Good morning. Our announcements are as follows. Our first women's gathering will be on Saturday, February 3rd at noon. For additional information, please see Evangelist Cynthia Hill. Her number is 601-209-4130. Installation service for moderator Dr. Willie Tobias, Jr., the executive board and cabinet members of Jackson District Missionary Baptist Association is this afternoon at New Mount Zion MB Church on Maple Street in Jackson at 3 p.m. The Deaconess class is scheduled for Saturday, February 10th at 10. See Sister Constance Ross for more information. New Hope. MB Church on Hamilton Street, Family and Friends Day is Sunday, February 11th at 2 p.m. And also at the conclusion of the announcement, Sister Bennett will come with an announcement. Our birthday is for the week. On Monday, the 29th, we have Deacon Bob Jefferson and Reverend John Handy. Amen. On Thursday, the 1st, for this week, we have Ronnie Parker and Chandra Rhodes. And on Saturday, Alana Turner. Today, we actually have Reverend Dr. David Carr's birthday. Happy birthday, Reverend Carr. Amen. Our prayer list 
We have Sister Vivian Ross, mother of Mary Gray's sister, mother Mary Gray's sister, sorry. Deacon Daniel Bennett, hospital. Amen. Brother Connie Dixon, he's in Manhattan, nursing and rehabilitation. Aretha McMillan, sister of Gracie Rattler. Trustee David Thickpen, Sister Octavia Johnson, aunt of Sister Veranda Newsom. Sister Angela Taylor, Sister Julia Giles Proctor, mother of Deacon Harry Giles. Sister Teresa Henderson, Deacon Charles Bell, Sister Mary Cooper, mother of Deacon Dennis Williams, Tyler Pfizer, nephew of Mother Wyndham, and Deacon Melvin Pfizer, and Joshua Henderson, and any other members that we are unaware of. For our bereavement and our thoughts and prayers, we have Sister Janice Burks Cavett, demise of her brother James Burks, Deacon Curtis Watson and family, Sister Rita Johnson and family, Sister Veranda Love, demise of my paternal grandmother, Mildred Townsend, and any other members that we aren't aware of. And now we'll have Sister Ben. Thank you, Miss Love. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor McNeil, other ministers on the roster, members, visitors, and friends. I just want to remind you all of the um, Pastor's A Club. Um, usually we take up um, the Pastor's A uh, donations on the first and third Sunday. We did miss January, but starting in February, every first and third Sunday, uh, one of the beautiful ladies will be standing here to uh, get your donations. 1 Timothy 5, 17 through 18, it states, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox when treads after drains and the labor deserve his wages. I'm glad you asked, Catherine. What does the Pastor Aid Committee do? The Pastor Aid Committee assists the pastor within the minister and serving as caretakers of the pastor. The purpose of the Pastor Aid Committee is to provide service to the pastor, ensuring that he is fully equipped, prepared, and able to fulfill his responsibilities in leading the congregation. Thank you. Sister Terry Bennett, Pastor A President. Thank you. 
understand what they were saying. They said they declared that we made it. 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 They declared. In spite of what the enemy tried to do. In spite of what Satan tried to do. In spite of all of that. The scripture says that when the enemy comes up as a flood, the enemy raises a standard against it. Amen. Amen. As they come, tomorrow is a special day for me. <laughs> tomorrow is a special day for me. Man, tomorrow I'll be turning 39 years old. Amen. 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 And also, so and also on April, April 2024, I'll be celebrating 20 years in ministry. So. So, God has been good to me. He's been good to me. So, I don't take my birthday lightly. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Brother Cross. Congra congratulations, Reverend Handy. Amen. You've been such a blessing to the, to the, Black, to the Black Chapel family, and we, we commend you. And again, congratulate you for, for your service. We are now at the point of a, of a service where, where we all are able to participate, mm -hmm. tithes and offering. Amen. Uh, you know, the word tells us that we are to give, give cheerfully and not grudgingly. Yes. And that, uh, <clears throat> and that we, uh, in other words, we don't give uh, in a manner that's not pleasing to God right. and the Father. Uh, right. You know, we did, we, uh, I don't know if you, I, I, I've experienced having something given to me and no one is what given to me gradually, um, and it, it, and really it didn't make me. F I'm sorry. <laughs> I've I've experienced having something given to me, but it wasn't given gradually, and and I, it really wasn't wasn't a good feeling, though. You know, so uh, but the Lord wants us to give cheerfully. And as you as you know, we have several means of receiving our, our gifts, our, our giving gifts. If you're not able to worship with us directly. The Give the Fire link is available, and, and we have the uh, drop box that's located on the west end of the building. It's, a, it's there 24-7. 20, At this time, we're in the hands of the urchers. Amen. Let's pray, please stand.
Let us all please stand. <clears throat> Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, first of all, we come to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be closed in our right mind as you woke us up this morning. Thank you for the use of our limbs. For allowing us to come together to come out to the house of prayer another Sunday. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. He bled and died and rose on that third day that we may have the right to the tree of life. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this offering. Bless the ones who give. Bless the ones who want to give but had not. Bless them that they may be to give next time. Lord, remember those who may be going through sickness right now. Those in the hospitals. Those who are in hospice. Those who are recovering in convalescent homes. Those who are sick and shunning, those who are homeless, hungry, in mental institutions, incarcerated. We remember them though, we remember them right now. We ask all the blessings. In your son Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
person for us. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy for us. No one in this earth can grant us goodness and mercy, but God. That's right. No one nor anything. We look at so many things and we give applause to so many people. That we identify with as being good. But at the end of the day, according to Scripture, there is none good but God. So all goodness that we have ever received in our lives and all the goodness that we have dispersed in our lives were birthed out of the will of God toward us. Birthed out of the will of God toward us. And there isn't anything in this world that we wouldn't do for some of us. There's no sacrifice that we're not willing to make for some of us. When all alone, even the love that you have for the us, for the some of us, a birth out of God, because God is love. Yes. And not only is God good, and God is love, but he is also a jealous God. And that is one of the reasons why he commissioned and commanded us to place him first. First. And that is why James tells us that in all things, don't forget God. Don't leave God out. Because if it had not been for the Lord, no one would have been good to you. Nothing would have been good to you. And you would have not been good to anybody, not toward anything. Apart from God, there's chaos, yes, sir. death, and destruction. Yes, but Jesus said, I come that you may have life yes, yes. and have it more abundant. Yes, yes. According to scripture, the wage of sin is death. Yes. Death. That means that every act of sin or unrighteousness that we've ever committed in our lives. Say that. In order for us to remain afterward, God had to pardon us. Amen. God had to pardon us. Yes, God's love had to overrule his justice. Yes. Because justifiably, as soon as an act was committed, we became citizens of death, yes. property of death, yes. but God. But God. Thank you, God. We don't take time to dissect this thing, mm -hmm. this yes, the thing the way we should dissect it. Uh -huh. yes, sir. But we should take a little more time to just listen to what the Spirit has to say to the church. Yes. Yes. And the Spirit speak to us through the word and words of God. 
He's not a feeling. He's not an emotion. He's a truth. And God's word is the only truth there is. God's word is the only truth. There is. Any conclusion that we draw, regardless of where we draw it from, if it did not come from the word of God, it's based on average and statistics. Only on averages and statistics. Besides from God, it's the only way of means that we have to go about drawing conclusions. Averages and statistics. That's what our personal truth lies on. But the word of God is the truth of God. Amen. Meaning God stands behind every word. As he say, my word will not go out and return back unto me void. Amen. But that it is going to accomplish that which pleases. And what pleases God most is that us, the people of God, be of good health, sound mind, and prosperous. Yeah. And God desired to use us as those tools, as those instruments to yeah. bring those fortunes upon others. Yeah. To bring those good fortunes upon others. There are others that God has blessed with the power on the tip of their tongue to financially bless you. Just, just one word. Can change you financially. And somebody God has already given the possession to to change your whole financial status. By just one word. The wisdom, all wisdom comes from God. There are medical scientists out there who have the answers to so many things and problems that are taking us out of here every day. But because of the price tag they placed on it, when God gave it to them freely, pharmaceutical companies, their products have been priced to such a degree whereas you can't afford to become a recipient of the blessing which God gave them in order to bring those works into manifestation freely. Because everything that's good comes from God. All blessings come from above. And what we as the people of God, our main objective should be to come, become better stewards over that in which God has entrusted us with because God's answers are thrown down through us, God's blessings, God's yeah. rewards, God's prosperity, his peace, his joy, his happiness are flowing down through us. Amen. Happiness, <coughs> joy, yeah. peace that we so often bow down on our knees and petition the throne of grace for us have been already woven into the fabric of us. The reason why we don't have peace, somebody else has taken it from us. Somebody else possess it, but they won't give it to you. Uh -huh. Joy. Goodwill. Happiness. Good health. One of the most deadly diseases of the human flesh are people. Nothing kills us faster than we ourselves. If you trace the cause of death back to every death of one that died, people had their hands on it. Amen. Had a whole lot to do with it. And then we blame it on God. Well, it's the Lord, it's the Lord's will. It's the Lord's will that we be of good health, sound mind, and prosperous. Amen. And He has blessed us with all the tools that are necessary in order to work those works upon each of our lives. His goodness. And it's mercy for us. Let's get this great choir round.
Each and every one of us carry very seed of God inside of us yes. that he has sown in order for us to disperse unto others. Yes, we are our brother's keeper. And God designed us that way. What will a man profit? <coughs> if he gain the whole world and lose his soul. <coughs> it is easy for a rich man. It is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. Why? Because a rich man is one who keeps everything that he gets and would not let go of anything that he has. It's not based on how much money he or she may possess. You can be poor financially and be rich. A rich person is one who gets all that they can and keeps everything that they get and won't let anyone have anything that they have. And it is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And in the eyesight of God, all of us are rich. Amen. Rich. Because the spirit of God lives in us. Yes. Not by my might, not by my power, but by my spirit. And he lives in all of us. We're rich. We are equipped with just what someone else needs. Every one of us are equipped with something. And God placed it there with that in which someone else lives, whose peace, whose joy, whose happiness, whose prosperity, whose health depends upon. Sound mind. <coughs> Just think about who you are. Yes, sir. We are born again, children of God. We are heirs to the wealth of God. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the 39th number of Psalms. I'm sorry. The 37th number of Psalms. <coughs> the 37th number of Psalms. And this first verse should be our spiritual anthem, meaning that it should speak of a truth mm -hmm. that should fill both the heavens and the earth Amen. in all that it takes it for us become better stewards of ourselves. And David speak these words. Mm -hmm. Fret not <clears throat> thyself of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as green herbs. Trust in the Lord and do good. 
so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be favored. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. The first through the fifth verse of the 37th number of Psalm. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land. And verily, thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So let us think on this thought. Trust and desire. Trust. and desire. Trust and desire comes unto us as a package deal. Meaning that we cannot have one without having the other. Trust and desire comes unto us as a package deal. Meaning that we cannot have one without having the other. We cannot have the desires of our unless we first trust in the Lord. And we cannot truly trust in the Lord without him in return giving unto us the desires of our heart. That is why David is telling us in our scripture reading this morning that if we would just trust in the Lord and delight ourselves in him, then he will give <clears throat> unto us the desires of our hearts. Desire is that divinely designed quality that our God took into those who trust him, into those who commit their ways after him, and into those who delight themselves in him. Uh, delight is that which keep us looking moving and pressing our way forward. Delight is that anticipated vision of the manifestation of that strong physical, mental, and emotional crave or desire for something that we have not as of yet obtained or possessed. Desire is the will of God intuited into those who trust and delight themselves in him. Oh, yeah. Desire is that mindset, that spirit, that attitude in which God intuits yes. into those who trust 
and delight themselves in him. Desire is the will of God toward mankind. It is the will of God that we have the desire that God will for us to have. Not so much as all the things that we want out of life, but no, God, when God says, I will give unto you the desires of your heart, meaning that he will give unto you to desire that in which he will you to have. And everything that God will unto us to have, he's ready to give it to us. He said, if you trust in me, then I would give unto you the desires of your heart. Not so much, not per se, everything that we ourselves through flesh desire and crave for. But he will give unto us the desire, the only desire that in which he will for us to have. And our God is standing willing, ready, and able to bring into manifestation that which he will for us to have. Right. And the key to it, he said, is trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. Now there's three spiritual enlightenments that I would like to share with you pertaining to trusting in the Lord. First of all, before we can trust in the Lord, we must first know the mind of God toward that in which we're trusting God for. We need to write this down. The first step in trusting in God is that we're going to have to know the mind of God pertaining to what it is that we're trusting God for. Trust. Meaning faith coming by hearing. Trust coming by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And when we just hear the word of God, we have woven into the fabric of our intellect instructions on how to activate and move the hand of God. And the answer to our every problem and the solution to our every situation is simply to know the mind of God. Trust. If you Trust in the Lord, he said. I will give unto you the desires of your heart. And the first step in trusting in God is knowing the mind of God pertaining to what it is that you trust in him for. James say, faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And when we just hear the word of God, we have woven into the fabric of our intellect instructions on how to activate and move the hand of God. Yeah. I remember the words of President Abraham Lincoln. Right before he had been made ready to sign the declaration of war, the war between the states. Yeah. As President Lincoln stood in his Uber office before his cabinet, as his cabinet members awaited for his decision. The words say that President Lincoln, he turned toward his cabinet and he spoke these words. A many of times I have been driven to my knees by the conviction of having nowhere else to go. When my own wisdom and the wisdom of those around me seemed to be insufficient for the day, he said, I then fell down on my knees and prayed to know the mind of God. Because the answer to our every problem and the solution to our every situation is simply to know the mind of God pertaining to, Lord, what would you have for me to do pertaining to my situation? And then Lincoln turned to his cabinet and said, now let us pray. The answer to our every problem and the solution to every situation is simply to know the mind of God pertaining to what would you have for me? me to do. Yeah. Me to do. Because all the promises of God rest upon if you will. If you, I will. If you. Every promise that God made unto humanity comes in that order. If you, I will. The first step in trusting in God is knowing the mind of God pertaining to what it is that God that you desire God to do. And the second step in trusting in the Lord is that you must be willing to leave the consequences of your trust in God up to God. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Yeah. 
You must be willing to leave the consequences of your trust in God up to God. And David was one who was willing to leave the consequences of his trust in God up to God. And that is the reason why David was able to pin this 37th number of song. You see, this 37th number of song was a song that David wrote unto himself. Amen. It wasn't written for the public. But this is a personal song that David written unto him, wrote unto himself in order to encourage himself. As a reminder of himself, of a reminder of all that he had in God that was inside of him. Amen. This 37 number of song was a song that David personally penned unto himself in order to encourage himself, in order to remind himself when David stated, fret not thyself. Because of evil doers, neither be thy enemies of the workers of iniquity, because soon they shall be cut down like grass and wither away like green herd. And all I have to do is trust in the Lord and do good, and thou shalt be fed. And, and while he's feeding me, if I continue to delight myself in the Lord, he will give unto me the desires of my heart. If I continue to delight myself in all I have to do is do what I've been doing in the Lord. All I have to do is remain faithful unto God. And these things too shall pass. He wrote this song in order to encourage himself. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity, because soon they shall be cut down like grass and wither away like green herd. In the meantime, all I have to do is trust in the Lord and do good, and I shall be fed. And while he's feeding me, I should delight myself in the Lord, and then he would give unto me the desires of my heart. Trust and delight. David was one who was willing. Willing. To leave the consequences of his trust in God up to God. And when you leave the consequences of your trust in God up to God, then God becomes responsible for the reaction of your action. Let me say that again. When you leave the consequences of your trust in God up to God, then God becomes responsible for the reaction of your action. And when God becomes responsible for the reaction of your action, strange and unusual happiness takes place in the midst of your situation. When God becomes responsible for the reaction of your action, no matter how many snares the enemy may lay for you, no matter how many ditches the enemy may dig for you, no matter how many barriers the enemy may place before you, there is a bomb down in Gideon that can blow up every barrier that can fill in every ditch and that can spring every snare if you just trust in the Lord and delight yourself in him he will give unto you the desires of his heart of his heart that which he desired you to have his heart and that's where we want our blessings to come from. That's where we want our wealth to come from. That's where we want our spirit to come from. That's where we want our healing to come from. That's where we want our peace to come from. That's where we want our joy to come from. That's where we want our happiness to come from. That's where we want our human fulfillment to come from. God! So this joy I give the world, then given in the world, sure enough can't take it away. God become responsible for the reaction of your action. Strange and unusual happenings takes place in the midst of your situation. David was willing to leave. He was willing to leave the consequences of his trust in God up to God. And the third, third step in trusting in the Lord is that you cannot allow the challenges of your desire you cannot allow the challenges of your desire to influence you to take refuge in your own strength and in your own ability. 
You cannot allow the challenges of your desire to influence you, to pledge allegiance with your own strength and with your own ability. Because once you pledge allegiance to your own strength and your own ability, you become a victim of self-sufficiency and self-dependency. And self-sufficiency and self-dependency have always been the two leading causes of the fall and the failure of man. Self-sufficiency and self-dependency have always been the two leading causes of the fall and failure of man. The greatest sin that man can commit against God is not adultery, is not fornication, is not drug addiction, is not homosexuality, is not murder, but trying to live independently apart from God. The greatest sin that man can commit against God is attempting to live independently apart from God. Because spiritual independence will take you further than you really want to go. Keep you longer than you really want to stay. And cause you more than you really want to pay. And that's another way, that's another name for spiritual independence. And that is dream chaser. When you're independently disattached from God, you become a dream chaser. And a dream chaser is one who chases after peace, chases after hope, chases after prosperity, chases after healing, chases after deliverance. A dream chaser is one who's always talking about what he's going to have, what he's going to do, where he's going to go, and how he's going to go back in there. But you know what, Black Chapel? I don't believe in dream chasers, but I believe in dream conquerors. And a dream conqueror is one who killed the beast who set out to kill you. And David was a dream conqueror. David killed all the beasts that set out to kill him. He killed the lion. He killed the bear. And when he stood before the fearless giant Goliath, he cried out to Goliath, now you come after me with a sword in one hand and a spear in the other. But I come after you in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. And Black Chapel, there's power in that name. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's Holy Ghost power in the name of Jesus. There's healing Healing power in the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. He is Lord. You come after me with a sword in one hand and a spear in the other. But I come after you in the name of the Lord. And David, with nothing more than a slingshot and five smooth stones and the will of God at his side, he slew the fearless giant Goliath. And in our scripture reading, we see this here David, this older David, this is this, this learned David, as he now sitting down on the ivory throne of grace with a sepulcher of power in his hands, as he looked out across his kingdom, while all of his enemies are behind him wondering, how did he get over? How did he get over? How did he make it? Some say that it was because of David's military power. Some say that it was because of certain political strings that had been pulled. And some say that it was because of some other form of chicanery. But David say, I am who I am and I have what I have because the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, 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 his goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. As I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the house of the Lord forever. I say unto you, Black Shepherd, continue to delight yourself in the Lord. Regardless of hell or hot water, you continue to trust in the Lord and delight yourself in the Lord. And he will continue to give unto you the desires of your heart. Forever. Don't ever step out of the Lord's house. And the Lord's house is not considered this building. But his spirit, his word, his will, you continue to do you God's way. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's your beginning and he's going to be your end. 
and the only end that would come to you would be the will of God toward you. Continue to trust in the Lord and delight yourself in the Lord and see when he continue to overflow you with the desires of his heart that he has poured off into your heart in order for your heart to only desire what he desired for you to have. And that's what we should be striving to get to right now. The first step is simply knowing the mind of God pertaining to what will he have for you to do pertaining to your situation. It's the key that unlocks all of the burdens that the world has to, has to cast upon us. Trust and delight. Trust and desire. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience of Kennedy for Baptist. The door of the church. The door of the church is open. God has already proofread. Proofread. Each of our lives. God has a way for us. And the world has a way for us. And as Joshua told the children of Israel as they stood at the gate that entered into the promised land. Choose ye this day which path you're going to take, which way you're going to go. He said, oh Israel, are you going to continue to go in the way of the God in which we left in Egypt? Or are you going to go God Jehovah's way? The way that God has promised and the end that God has already delivered. Choose you this day which God you're going to serve. The God of flesh or the God of spirit. He said, I can't speak for you, O Israel, but for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to serve the Lord. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism, yeah, yeah, yeah. the door of the church is open. The first step in trusting in the Lord is that you have to know the mind of God. Pertaining to whatever it is that you're trusting in God for. That makes common sense. How can you trust God for anything? If you don't know what God has already spoken pertaining to that thing. Yeah. What are you trusting him for? How can we trust God for anything when we don't know the words that God has spoken pertaining to that thing that you're trusting him for? The only way that we can go God's way is we have to know God's way. If we don't know God's way, we cannot go God's way. And the first step in trusting God's way is to know the mind of God pertaining to what it is that God, that you would have God to do. And the second step is that you have to learn how to leave the consequences of your trust in God up to God. Learn how to leave the consequences of your trust in God up to God. No matter how deep, believe it, it may look after you choose God's way, no matter how dim it may appear to you. No matter how unrewarded it may appear to you. Leave the consequences of your trust in God up to God. And once you cross that hurdle, don't you allow the challenges of your desire to influence you, to pledge allegiance with your own strength, with your own ability, and with your own capability. Because self-sufficiency and self-dependency has always and still are the greatest sin that man can commit against God. Attempting to live independently apart from God The biggest disgrace 
dishonor. That we can render unto God. It's to do ourselves our way. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. If you're here this morning, will you come? If you're here, will you come? The word of God say, the day that you hear my voice, heart not thy heart. Amen. For behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, woman, or child hear my voice and open up, I will come in. And all it took to summon the presence of God into your presence is to hear what God had to say. Pertaining to where you are. You're on the other side of the door. And he said, if any man hear my voice and open up the door, I will come in. That is the key. That is the answer to God entering into you. Are you being allowed entrance into the presence of God? It's by, just by knowing what God had to say about your condition. Amen. That's all it took. It's for you to know the mind of God pertaining to your situation. Yeah. That's all it took. And follow the instruction. Open the door. And see one and come in. Oh, yeah. And sup with him. What amazing God we serve. Amen. What an amazing God we serve. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We add difficulty. We add difficulty to the will of God toward us. We add difficulty by rebelling, by just simply not trusting. If you if we truly believe and we're willing to trust our believe, if we were leaving, willing to leave the consequences of our trust in God up to God, when he tells us, just one little thing, when he tells us that if you bring your tithes and offering to the storehouse so that I may have meat in my house, see one open up a window in heaven. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And pour you out more blessing than you'll ever be able to receive. Amen. That's the word. If we just only believe and trust, the first step toward trusting in God is to know the mind of God pertaining to what it is that you're trusting in Him for. Yeah. And God has spoken on every wise. That's not a situation. That's not a condition. That's not a circumstance that we can encounter in life where God has not spoken on. Amen. And all we have to do is move God's way. Amen. Desire. Is that divine or design quality that God has intuited into those who trust him those who go his way. Oh, yeah. The door of the church is still open. We're getting ready for prayer, but let it be known, the door of the church is still open because it is still God's will that none should perish. And we not, are not just speaking about the perishing by way of the wager of sin, which is death. We're talking about also perishing because of the needs that this physical part of us suffer for. 
are being held in bondage by. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to the Lord. The world and they that dwell therein. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. And it would say, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? But he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sown deceitfully. For he shall receive the blessings from the Lord, the God of his salvation. And David went on and said, my father has cattle of a thousand years. And 10,000 blessings just to satisfy the poor. All the silver and all the gold belongs to the Lord. So God is not only concerned about the spiritual person in you. But in his own place, just as concerned about the flesh. Just because we're half spirit and half flesh. That doesn't mean that God is not ready, willing, and able to minister unto all the needs of the flesh. That's why Jesus told the devil upon the mountain, man does not live by bread alone. Bread has its place. And in his own place, it's just as important as the needs of that other spirit. Just as important. Because God has chosen this fleshly body of ours to house his Holy Spirit. Amen. He's not just concerned about the furniture inside, but he's also concerned about the condition of the house on the outside. When someone surpassed God's house, he wanted to look like God lived there from the inside out. From the inside out. When people look at you, God wants you to look like you belong to God. God wants you to act like you belong to God. Feel like you belong to God. I guarantee if we came upon one of President Obama's daughters, she looked like she belonged to President Obama. She act like she belonged to him. She feel like she belonged to him. And she carry herself as she's a daughter of his. And so it is with our God want us to look like, feel like, act like, think like, and know who we are and whose we are from the inside out. Trust in the Lord and he will give unto you the desires of your heart. Lord, what will you have for me to do pertaining to my situation and do it? Let us pray. Once again, our most gracious and eternal Father, with bowed heads and humbled hearts, carrying out the breadcrumb trail that you have left for us to follow after. When you say that man should always pray and faint not, and that if we pray, have faith and believe, Whatsoever we ask in thy name, believe in, and we shall receive it. He said, we have faith the size of a mustard seed. Faith coming by hearing, and hearing the word of God. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, then you can speak unto yonder's mountain. And say, mountain, move. And mountain will pick itself up. Because it's being lifted by the Lord and cast itself off into the depths of the sea. And the first step, Lord God, in accomplishing such ends is to know the mind of God. Lord, what will you have for me to do pertaining to my situation? What will you have for me to do? Because God has already impregnated in us the answers, the solutions. Unto others' needs. Unto others' desires. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the breadcrumbs that you left that would lead us to healing. 
that will lead us to deliverance, that will lead us to peace, lead us to joy, lead us to happiness, lead us to prosperity, and to lead us to spiritual and physical fulfillment. Thank you for the breadcrumbs that has fallen into the book of life. You say that your word will not go out and return back unto you void, but that it is going to accomplish that which pleases you. And Father, what pleases you is that whatever may be held in your people, regardless of what shape, form, or fashion it may appear in, you want it gone. You want it removed. You want it cast away. So lead us and guide us. As you did, President Lincoln, in what you would have for us to do pertaining to our situation. Give us a word. Give us a vision. Give us an insight. Give us a spirit of discernment of what you would have us to do. Pertaining to what it is that's challenging our desire. That's challenging our needs. That's challenging our wants. That's challenging our healing. That's challenging our peace. That's challenging our desire. Let us know what it is that we have to do. And we are going to leave the consequences of our choice in you up to you. And we are not going to allow the challenges of our desire to influence us to pray at your allegiance unto our own strength, unto our own knowledge, unto our own ability, unto our own capability. But we're going to trust you, Lord, all the way. We're going to trust you. And as David said, we're not going to be afraid of the arrows by night. No, we're not, Lord God. We're going to go with you all the way. Whatever the need of their moments may be, all of those who are petitioning the throne of grace, whatever the need of their moments may be, Lord, we're asking you to reveal unto them what it is that you would have for them to do. And we pray that they have the strength and the courage and the faith and willpower, determination and perseverance to go all the way with you. Claim their healing. Claim their deliverance. Claim their peace. Claim their joy. Claim their happiness. Claim their prosperity. Claim their fulfillment. And we stake our claim right now in the name of Jesus. In the mighty precious name of Jesus, we stake our claim. And let it be done according to our faith. And our faith cometh by hearing. And hearing what you have to say. In the mighty precious name of Jesus, we pledge to go your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
for all that he has allowed to be said and done throughout the activity of our Sunday morning worship service. Amen. And we thank God for each and every one of you contributors in your own ways, in your own place, the service that you render is just as important as any service that any individual in this sanctuary has rendered. Because you represent just by being where you are right now the manifestation of the will of God toward this worship service. Just by you being where you are now you represent the manifestation of the will of God toward this worship service. I don't know, you don't know, and no one else probably knows what difference you made Amen. just by being who you are and where you are. And as the buckle say, the just must live by faith. Knowing, leave here knowing that your being here was not in vain. That, that's all we need to carry out of here. That's all we need to carry out of this sanctuary this morning. Is knowing that your being here was not in vain. You part of the spiritual puzzle that God put together when he created the foundations of this earth, when he closed the book, nothing shall be added, nor anything taken away what's from what's already been written. Nothing added nor taken away from, from, from that which has been written. And it was written in your being for you to be right where you are, just because of where you are. You can never be in the wrong place by being in the Lord's house. Never, ever, regardless of what influence influenced you to enter into. You can never go wrong. You can never be in the wrong place in the Lord's house. You are part. One of the pieces that God has assembled this divine puzzle with before the foundation of this earth was created. That's just how important you are and you have been to this worship service. Before we go, I'd like to remind our members and all the friends of Black's Chapel about our building fund. Amen. I thank God for all the pledges who have filled out pledge cards. I thank you for the contributions in which you've already made. We know according to the cards The span extends between January this year and January next year. And many of you have already gotten a head start on your giving. We appreciate all of you equally for filling out a card. And I would just like to say to our viewing audience, especially our members, our virtual members, just because you haven't filled out a pledge card, you can go into our Gillify link, and there's a space there, there's a space there, a place there where you can become a pledger online. Mm -hmm. And as you send your contributions in on the building fund, our office will make out a pledge card for you. There's no maximum 
and there's no minimum to what you can bless us with. But we would love to have you on board, not just speaking to our virtual members, but also to all the virtual friends of the Blacks Chapel Missionary Baptist Church family. We would love for you to be an active part in this mission that God has placed us on. It is a community mission. It is a work that suffers and needs to be done, not just in this community, but in every community. Because as I say before, God has already intuited into each of us the sufficiency in order to supply whatever need of the moment we may experience. And we have a need for the work in which we're doing pertaining to this mission. It's a need. It's not just a desire, but it's a need. And we, the people of God, have already been impregnated of all the proceeds proceeds that are needed in order to bring into manifestation the will of God's end. And we're asking you, those who have not gotten on board, to get on board. We have pledge cards here every Sunday. You know, I don't know about you, but it, it makes me feel a whole lot better when I ask for it, rather than someone asking me of it. I, I feel better when I say, I will, than when somebody asks me, will you? You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So just because we don't stand before you every Sunday and petition the pledge card, that doesn't mean that we don't have any need <coughs> and that we have a need for pledging. So make yourself feel good by not having to be asked, but you become the actor. Amen. It makes me feel good to play that role of the actor. Give me, and not someone asking me, will you? You with me? Does that make any sense at all? And, 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 and this, we're in the season. We're in the season for income tax. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't have to look at the calendar to know when that season is drawing near. I can look at the used car lot, <laughs> the shade tree car lot. They packed, waiting to snatch those income tax checks out of our possession. Waiting. Stand in line. Almost every corner. Even in front of people's houses. Jalopies. $3,000 down and $50 a month for the rest of your life. <laughs> and when you pay $3,000, you bought the car four times. So they really don't care if you don't show back up with that $50. Or well, they done made a 50% profit off you in the down payment. The Lord is getting ready to bless you with a little extra. And that's a good time for you to show your gratitude toward the Lord. Amen. In giving a little extra. Toward your pledge. And toward your tithes and offerings. You can never go wrong. Going right to God. And that's God's way. Never go wrong. You can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. <clears throat> so when it comes to those cards, don't allow yourself to become axed of, but you become the axer. Starting next Sunday, I'm looking for a grove of axers by way of sitting audience and by way of online pledging. I don't have no problem in saying what I'm saying and in doing what I'm doing. Because it's not for me. It's
It's because of the craving desire that God has placed in me toward working that end. And anything that's been done for the Lord by me, I have no shame in my game. Amen. Not any. I don't have no problem every Sunday morning coming to this portal, looking you straight in your face and telling you just what I told you. I told you that night if you go back and talk about me, tell a lie in the name, they did Jesus say, but at the end of the day, what did he tell the Father? The only thing that's important is to see you through. And in this subject matter, the only thing that's really, truly important is to finish work. January of next year, I want to be like my big brother Jesus. We should want to be like our big brother Jesus. And that is by looking up toward the heaven and say, Father, it's finished. So let us finish this thing off and go on to the next stage in our faith in God. If there's nothing more, Deacon Brown. We thank God for our candidate. Deacon Ross brought it to my attention a couple weeks ago about the right hand of fellowship. I'm asking all of our newly baptized candidates, those who are here today and those who have been done throughout this year and the early part, the latter part of last year, those who have not received the right hand of fellowship. Next Sunday, we're going to extend the right hand of fellowship. So please, ma'am, please, sir, thank you, Brother Deacon Ross, for bringing to my attention. We want all of those of you who baptized today and all of those who have previously baptized who have not been, received the right hand of fellowship, make sure you're here next Sunday morning, Sunday service, to receive the right hand of fellowship. Amen? Amen. Amen. If that's, and also, let us stand. We're going to have a special prayer. Many of our members are undergoing the state of bereavement, and some have dear one in the hospital. So we want to pray for the Bennett family, Brother Danny Bennett himself, who's been physically challenged. But one thing we know, and that is whatever the will of God may be toward him, I Believe in my heart that his light is green. And that is, Lord, so when I come, let me find you doing. The last time he was in this worship service, that is exactly what he was doing. He was working the work while it was daylight in his life. He was sowing the seeds in which God has impregnated him with by making the best joyful noise that he could unto the Lord and to the people of God. He's on his post. The William family, the Johnson family, Sister Rita Johnson, the Watson family, which is the William family, Deacon Curtis Watson. We're with you all in spirit, in mind, in thought, and in prayer that God will continue to strengthen you in the separation from your loved ones and the Bennett family in the challenge in which their loved one is being challenged by. So let us bow our heads for prayer. Once again, our most gracious and eternal Father, thank you for choosing us as the vessel that you desire to place your spirit in. Could have placed it in anything, anything. And we call everything things that are not what we call human. Human beings. Everything out being a human is a thing. And Father, you could have played your spirit in anything besides us. But you chose us as a dwelling place for your Holy Spirit. And Father, we say thank you. Thank you for choosing us in being made in your image and in your likeness. 
Thank you, Lord God, for giving us a road map that can lead and guide us to you. Regardless of what the need of the moment may be, your grace is sufficient. And your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Father, we lift up the bereaved families. So many of us in this sanctuary today have already undergone the experience in which they have recently experienced. So many of us have experienced the separation from a sister, from a mother. And so many of us have had loved ones lying on their bed of affliction with us standing there not knowing which way they're going to go. Whether they're going to stay or whether they're going to leave. We've been there. And we know where they are in thought, in mind, in love, and in desire. And Father, we connect with them right now. In all of those ways, we connect with them. You say, well, there are two or more gathered together in your name, touching and agreeing that you will be a God in me. So Father, we know that your presence is also with them. And where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. So Father, we ask you to just liberate them. Liberate them from the pain, from the doubt, from the uncertainty, from the fear, from the question, from all the negatives that flesh experience in times like those. We claim healing and we claim deliverance upon the sick and upon the bereaved and upon those who are loved ones of the sick. We claim healing and deliverance in the mighty precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we do indeed pray and give thanks. Now, until we meet again, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide from henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say together. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.